Good morning and welcome to What's Up Kansas City. Again, we have one of Kansas City's finest, one of Kansas City's own, Mr. Michael Walker, who is very well known in our community. And good morning, Michael Walker. Good morning, how you doing? And you are with Midwest Contract Services, that's, that's correct? That's correct. All right then, why don't you look into that camera there and kind of tell us about who is Mike and give us a short bio on Michael Walker. Well, um, I started my company, Midwest Contract Services, in 2002. Uh, 2013 marks our 11th year in business, which I'm very proud of. Um, most businesses, they say, after the first two or three years, are usually go out of business. So I'm very proud to, to say that we've been in business for 11 years and uh, we're going strong. And um, we hope to uh, continue to progress in the community. All right, then. Now tell us who you are. Tell us, uh, are you a family man? Right? Uh, family man. Um, I have three kids, uh, married. Um, just uh, a business owner and uh, looking to try to do well in the community. Yeah, and you what? Uh, you have girls, boys? Or? I have uh, one girl and two boys. One girl and two boys? That's correct. Two boys? How, how old are the, are the boys? Uh, the oldest son is 32 this year, youngest son is uh, 10, and my daughter will be 16 in April. Very good, very good. Now, are they athletic like you? Uh, my oldest son played at Central, actually, as well as I did, and uh, my youngest son, he plays sports, but my daughter, no, she doesn't play sports. Okay, then. now you know, uh, a lot of folks might have forgotten Michael Walker was one of our great athletes in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, he did an excellent job. He played down the MU with Norm Stewart, is that right? That's correct. And um, you were one of, you were one of his first, really, projects from Kansas City, weren't you? Uh, no, there was others. There was others. Um, uh, Felix, like, Felix German, Clay yeah. Johnson. Uh, uh, and after me, there was Anthony Peeler, and uh, of course, you know, I think uh, Kareem Rush. So um, they he had quite a few uh, from Kansas City. Not not as many as probably from like St. Louis or some of the other places in the state, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, there was quite a few from Kansas City. What was your best game down in the year? One that you uh, can remember. One that I can remember. Well, I, I would say that the one that I'm probably most remember for is when we played Louisville. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a really good game against them. That was probably about the most the one people will probably remember me by. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you guys go to any championships? Uh, we won. Well, actually, I was there during the time when um, we had a run of about like we won four Big Eight championships. Uh, that's, I was that's on, right. I was on two of those teams, and uh, um, and then we went to the NCAA tournament uh, both to, both years. I was there. Um, and uh, we actually got to the Sweet 16 my, my, sec my junior year there. So mm -hmm. that's pretty successful teams. Now, do you still maintain relationships with any of those guys? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I uh, talk to some of them from time to time. Uh, I go to different alumni events that they have. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, you know, I talk, talk to them, stay in touch with them. What about Norm Stewart? You ever... uh, I talked to Norm uh, was about three months ago. Uh, three months ago. Yeah, now he's a surviving cancer patient. Isn't he? That's correct. That's correct. They say he has a great sense of humor. Yeah, he does. He does. I, I, I was <laughs> meeting with some business folks not long ago, and they were talking about his uh, his sense of humor. And this guy, uh, uh, his name is uh, 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 Daryl Daryl Burnell or uh, Daryl Burns. Daryl Burns, hmm. white guy, and he said he knew he knew you. Hmm. And uh, and uh, but uh, they, he was telling me how great a sense of humor that Norm Stewart had. Yeah, he does. He did have a good sense of humor. He was always, uh, you know, he was serious, uh, but he was also, you know, he also could uh, lighten the mood sometimes with his humor. So. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, uh, tell the young folks out here because we're trying to reach some of these young folks, and and I consider you to be one of our icons in uh, in our community, coming from a great high school, coming from a great college. And you come back to our community, and uh, and you're contributing with your business. Tell them, tell them a little bit about your desire and will, and how you got started in, in business. Well, uh, I kind of kind of looked at business as what I wanted to really do, as far as uh, where I wanted to uh, have a business. Which, to me, a lot of times when you try to have a business, it should be something that you like doing. And, That's right. Uh, I looked at. Uh, trying to have a sporting goods store and I looked at janitorial because I you know I, when I grew up I you know I used to work for my mom um, 
go with her sometimes to clean buildings and stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, I worked in the sporting goods store for a while and I started to realize didn't really have the capital for it. So mm -hmm. that's when I decided to uh, explore the janitorial business. Uh, I started working for some janitorial companies and uh, took a lot of what I learned from some of those companies, some of the people who work or own those companies. And uh, I've used a lot of what I've learned to uh, to create my business and to uh, grow my business. So uh, it's, I think it's always important that if you go, whatever you want to do is that you go and you try to learn it from the from the inside and from the bottom, and then you kind of work your way uh, from there, as opposed to just coming up with an idea, say, "Hey, I want to do this," and you know, not having any real experience at it. So I mean. You're more apt to succeed if you have some experience, some knowledge, and uh, um, OJT. Yeah, I mean, knowing where you want to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, as opposed to uh, not having anything to fall back on, you know, and then making a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. So, and how, how much do you think higher education played on your role that you're doing now? Um, I think it played a very important part because um, I think. You know, kids should go to college, is, you know, if they can, because it's important. Because you're going to meet people, you're going to meet contacts, you're going to uh, you're going to see a whole different environment from what you grew up in, mm -hmm. especially people from our neighborhoods. And uh, it's important to to have those contacts, you know, because you never know when you might be able to pull from those contacts and use them to advance your business. Um, and then you learn different skills once you go to college. You know, mm -hmm. you, you know, you learn that you need to network, that you're gonna, uh, you're gonna be interacting with different people from other countries, other cities, mm -hmm. and you know, you just uh, you broaden your horizon by going to going to college. I think, you know, mm -hmm. even if it's just for a year or two, you know, mm -hmm. you're gonna learn some things that you would never learn if you stayed at home and not, you know, tried to explore. Mm -hmm. so. What do you think about sports? What, how much do you think sports have impacted your desire and will to be a successful business person? Uh, I think sports is very important uh, simply because it teaches you skills, life skills that um, that you could probably never get anywhere else. Uh, you know, teamwork, determination, uh, discipline, stick to itness. I mean, all those things that you need. Don't stop. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just all those things that you need to um, to operate a business. And uh, you learn it all from sports. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people. I mean, I know there's successful people in business who didn't have, didn't play sports. But you know, I think that um, you know, to, to those skills that you learn playing sports translates over into business. So. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, the uh, I noticed that you are very quietly uh, a consensus builder when it comes to networking. You and I have had a chance to talk a little bit over the few years here. It seemed like you 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 really do networking because you would have to. You got how many uh, cities over you at? Uh, right now we're probably uh, performing janitorial services in about, uh, let's see, I would say about eight states. And uh, you know, I, I'm not one to uh, to broadcast what I do uh, or to brag about it, but you know, I'm just trying to quietly get the job done and. Uh, uh, Trying to take care of my family, right. you know, try to right. make sure that the, that my kids have what they need to uh, to when they're ready to venture out, right. you know, whether they get the education or whatever it is they're going to do, and trying to make sure I can provide for that. So, right. um, it, to me, it's not about showing what you're doing; it's just about do what you do, and you know, and try to make sure that you're you you're being a positive, you know, on other people. So, an influence, influence, yeah. influence on you. Yeah, you know, I like that. You know. You know, I, uh, when I first met you, folks, I was passing him notes in church, uh, trying to connect with this brother. I had an opportunity <laughs> for him. He's like, who is this guy? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, but uh, over a period of years, I think we've uh, enjoyed uh, learning each other and meeting each other. I know I have. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, I always enjoy our conversations. And so. we have good conversations. And, and I, that's one thing I would encourage you young folks out there to uh, find people that you can have a conversation with. I call them quiet conversations. And... And this young man here is a, a product of uh, uh, that I went out and built a relationship with him. 
Yeah. And it started right there in church, uh, me passing notes to him in church, and he said, this weird guy here. But I kept on, and, uh, and lo and behold, I ended up uh, with office here in this historical Lincoln building on the 18th of Vine, and he has an office here, and um, it's been real great. Now, Mike, why don't you give our, our young folks out there, especially some of those athletes out there, give them a word before we leave about education and, and desire and will? Well, uh, <laughs> the, the one thing that I would tell any athletes, you know, and, I, and it's something that I didn't learn. Uh, I mean, I learned it, but, you know, you don't pay attention to it because you, uh, because you are playing sports, so things are going fast for you, and you're trying to, uh, you're trying to achieve the goal of being successful in sports. So the one thing I would tell kids is that not just to focus so much on the sports, but focus on what they're going to do after sports. I mean, that's going to be really important. I mean, while you're playing, you know, you're having fun, you're enjoying it, you're having some success, but you should also be looking at, okay, where am I going to be at 10 years from now? And, you know, and some of these guys that you run across who they might be playing sports too, they might turn out to be somebody that you can network with. And, you know, to keep those type of relationships going, not just make it be about sports, but, you know, because I guess kids nowadays have a way more opportunities than... Than, than when I played even. That's right. And they, they, they come across people that, you know, they could influence their lives or could change, take their lives in different directions. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you just use it as sport and that's it, then you'll miss out on the opportunities that are there for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the sport is not just about uh, playing it. It's about, you know, other people that you're going to meet. You know, some people you're going to meet and have relationships with the rest of your life, you know, and that's the good thing about sports. Mm -hmm. So... I would just tell you know tell kids to make sure that uh, they're using the sport for something else just, than just the sport. Mm -hmm. So, well, ladies and gentlemen, you, you had it best here with Mr. Michael Walker. What year did you come out of Central High School? Central High School, seventy nine. Seventy nine. The fight and screaming Blue Eagles right up there on <laughs> Linwood in Indiana, which I graduated from there too in nineteen sixty seven, <laughs> and it was a pleasure to graduate from such a great school. Uh, uh, Mr. Michael Walker, we have enjoyed you being with us today. Thanks for having It's probably me. been one of the most peaceful interviews that we <laughs> had. You know, you like the quiet warrior. You're very <laughs> quiet, about you, but handling your business, taking care of your family, and contributing back to our community in Kansas City. And that's our desire here at, at uh, Cascade Media, What's Up Kansas City, with Mr. Carlos Nelson as our skipper on deck is to broaden the horizon and create an information platform on the wave of the future on the internet. And uh, we are doing our job, and man, we really are thankful for Mr. Michael Walker being with us today. We had another great interview, Mr. Darren Stewart. Two of Kansas City's own, people don't even really know about them. But we are bringing this information to you, and we want you to pay attention to it. And Mike, we want you to send us this interview out to your family and friends and to your coach uh, down there, Norm Stewart, and some of your friends across the country because we're moving. We're growing uh, like a blazing fire on brush. And so, you know, when I was a little kid, uh, uh, Mike, uh, I was a Cub Scout. I'm an Eagle Scout. And I grew up down there on 22nd and Prospect. I learned one thing. To look sharp is to be sharp. And what's up, Kansas City? <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> what do you think about it?